I'm here to explore and understand more about the Indian Navajo culture. This is her home. Yeah. She li she has this whole area to live in. It's great. Right. So, it's beautiful in a way that I didn't even comprehend until I came here. So, so people used to live inside this? Yeah, this is where they were living was their home. Wow. To speak with them and get to know their history and their take on spirituality. The creator gave us the landscape with the, the vegetation. It's a resource. Understand their, their stories and their dynamics within their family. It brings like, you know, family, friends together. That's great. Is your family? Yeah. And the way they view the world and as best as I can in the amount of time that I have, I uh, try to get to know them. The White House ruin in Canyon de Chez is the first place that we went to see. And uh, we performed right in front of it. And to be standing that close to something that, um, that tells such a story of the Armasazi people is humbling. And to see their different way of life, you know, how, how they used to live communally and still do to a very large extent, um, something that I very much believe in. They very much exemplified that by the way that they live. your feet
I feel blessed that there are these extrapolations outside of my music that I'm able to delve into and, and um, experience based on the fact that I am in the public eye. There are so many things that have come of it that have been so positive, one of them being taking part in this show and being able to bury myself deep within areas in this, in this reservation that I may not be able to otherwise. So people used to live inside this? Yeah, this is where they were living, was their home. Wow. How many people do you think would be in this one? In that one's probably like four to six people, because mm. they're small, then size they were small, yeah. Wow. And how many people in total all up, up on this whole ledge? Uh, probably somewhere around 100. Wow. How long ago um, were people living here? This one, I'll say somewhere over uh, maybe uh, 1,300 years ago. And, uh, and the people here disappeared at, at some point? Around 1,300, they end aside, they left this area. Cold weather um, came through here, they, and they can't survive. Mm -hmm. Some people stayed in the rain for 20 to 30 years, so they had to leave this area. Okay. Right up here, you see some hand. Uh, they put their hand on the wall. Mm -hmm. This is you. If you hold your left hand, go like this. Mm -hmm. This is loving yourself. You heighten yourself. Ooh. This is your mother, your father, mm -hmm. your grandmother, your grand grandfather. Mm -hmm. Even they're gone, they left. You can contact with them with your thumb this way. Mm. That's amazing. So what was this? This was this was me. Mm -hmm. My mother? Your mother? My father? father. My grandmother? Mm -hmm. My grandfather? Yeah. I want to reach them. Shed caught, shed funny, low, woe, woe. I quit in a shako, shake it lately, ya, hey, ya, hey, yo. No son, shama, baka, baka, na shako, shed funny, low. We are ha, we are ha, yo. No son, shama, baka, baka, na shako, shed funny, no. We are ha, we are ha, we are ha, yo. To go into the painted cave and actually seeing the painted hands on the wall for me was that, you know, the more I read about history, the more I understand that there's so, several different takes on history. There's a lot of revisionism that goes on, but when you're at a wall with paintings of children's hands on it and families, it's, it's um, pretty undeniable that, that they existed. Stay safe.
I could definitely envision myself living amongst these people many, many years ago. Um, in, in as best a way as I can possibly do, I try to recreate that in my present day life. But there's, there's something to be said for, for the simplicity and yet this, the, um, the perfection in which, in, in the way that they lived their life, in the way that they cooked, prepared food and, and expressed and their music and their rituals and their prayers and their, um, their dances and everything had, had such a perfection to it. Nature is a great audience. Um, when I'm writing songs, I write to myself, and I'm, it's, it feels as though things are being channeled uh, through me, and I feel humbled to be able to express myself in the way that I do. So to be in a setting such as this, and, uh, and to sing in such utter silence amongst the odd sound of an animal is, um, is the purest environment in which I could express myself.
We're in Mystery Valley here, and over my left shoulder is Monument Valley in the distance. I've been inspired, and the word that keeps coming up for me is awe, because I'm in such awe of not only the, the beauty of, of how this place looks and the landscapes, but the humility and openness of the people that I've met and their humor and their take on life. I'll go first in case, you know, yeah. I fall back. Yeah, that's what I do, is to get you on the way back up. You, back <laughs> you get me feet. on the way back down. <laughs> so people would hide here when the Navajo people were being attacked or even further yeah. back? Mm-hmm, you know. That was it, that's like you go to sleep with your one eye open, one right. sleep, oh, that was it, and uh, your identity is, is the one, you know. Right. It's amazing what it was like. My grandma says, we were something just to get hunted. Human used to hunt. Mm -hmm. Navajos, mm -hmm. like uh, men, kids, children, everything. So. Because they wanted to take over, or because what was their motivation? I think there was basically it was a uh, take the the habitat, the 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 territorial that mm -hmm. we've been given from the Creator. Mm -hmm. The Creator is the one that gave it to us. Right. Gave me a language. Mm -hmm. Gave me spirit inside of me to function, I, you know. Right. And that's what we do. And this is it's a habitat. Right. This is where you're happy. Yeah. You can't take me away from it. You know? No. Um, I've ridden horses since I was quite young and um, had a couple of disastrous moments. So, <laughs> so this is going to be a, a way of reclaiming my courage on a horse. There's really no better way to experience this kind of an environment than on and with an animal that is that beautiful and is part of this landscape. Someone here to explain your publishing. We know how much you love to be in front of audiences. Hopeful, you are schoolbound, you are naive, you are driven. something anything you'd like to know young lady you said yes I'd like to know what kind of people I'll be dealing with precocious you We're surprised you're not in, in a far gone asylum. We're surprised you didn't crack up, Lord knows that we would have. We would have liked to have been there, but you keep pushing us away.
We were all saying we wanted to do our entire next record in that cave. <laughs> Might be a little logistically nightmarish, but we would probably do it. At least one song. Hi. Oh, that's it. It was amazing to meet um, this woman who showed us her Hogan. This is this is her home. Yeah. She li she has this whole area to live in by herself. It's beautiful. And she can have her explain uh, the the ritual um, that young girls who are sort of coming of age and um, coming into womanhood go through. And she showed us how they make how they make the food and how they make the, the rug. She showed me the first rug that she had ever made when she was young, when she was younger than I am. Heaven. <laughs> and uh, she was just a beauty, super goddess. time on this trip and several times during this trip I decided definitively that I was moving here and I was going to live in a Hogan <laughs> um, and I still might do that but my friends laugh and say that I'll, I'd last a week which is not true that I have like this to immerse myself in a culture that is so vastly different from the one I was born and raised in is, is humbling. It's something that I will miss and I will think of every time I look at my turquoise. <laughs> Walking through Slot Canyon was 
mind boggling. My. Oh. <laughs> Just because of how the water had shaped the rocks. I mean, human beings could never have built that. <laughs> wow. Amazing. One of the things that I have been in such awe of is, are the colors here and the different, the different lighting that showed up, whether it be in the cave um, at a certain time of day or the dusk or the morning. Exactly. I mean, all, of the, all of the lighting was completely natural and we didn't use any lighting of our own. And I think a lot of it was really captured in a beautiful way. I went to your house, walked up the stairs, Open your door without ringing the bell. Walk down the hall into your room where I could smell you. And I shouldn't be here without permission. I shouldn't be here. Would you forgive me, love? If I didn't sit in your shower, would you forgive me, love? If I laid in your bed, would you forgive me, love? If I stay all afternoon, I took off my clothes, put on your robe. And I went through your choice and I found your cologne. Went down to the den, found your CDs, and I played your journey. And I shouldn't stay long. You might be home soon. I shouldn't stay long. Would you forgive me, love? If I didn't see in your shower, would you forgive me, love? If I laid in your bed, would you forgive me, love? If I stay all afternoon, I burned your incense, I ran a bath, and I noticed a land. Said on your desk, it said, Hello, love, I love you so, love. Meet me at midnight, and love, it wasn't my writing. I better go soon, it wasn't my writing. So forgive me, love, if I cry in shower so forgive me love for the salt in your bed so forgive me love if I cry all afternoon As we were talking outside, it was cold. We were shivering yet warm by the subject matter. My wife is in the next room. We've been having troubles, you know. Please don't tell her or anyone, but I need to talk to somebody. He said, wouldn't it be a shame if I knew how great I was five minutes before I died? I'd be filled with such regret before I took my last breath and I said, but you're going to tell me this now and you're not going to die anytime soon. And I said, I haven't been eating chicken or meat or anything and you said yes, but we've been wearing leather. And I laughed and said, we're the top of the food chain and yes, you're still a fine woman. And Each 
There's really nothing that can compare to how I feel when I sing or when I write music. It's the closest I feel to God. It's the most tangible form I have that a God, or that God is us, or that God is. So when there's that convergence, when all my bandmates and members and myself and our intention is all the same, and there's this collective intention, we're greater than the sum of our parts. When I walked by, they said, thank you too, dear. I was all pigtails and cords. And there was a day when I would have said something like, hey, dude, I could buy and sell this place, so kiss it. I too once thought I was odd something. This place here, um, we're in the Vaux Canyon, mm -hmm. and it's part of Mystery Valley. And there are ruins, you know, throughout the, the canyons and the Vaux Canyon, so you probably saw some of it. Yeah, I saw. I saw that yeah. one too. Yeah, this is called um, um, House of uh, Mini Mini House Ruins, mm -hmm. and um, they date back probably like to 1200, 1200 AD, and we had. Um, we were talking about it, you know, last night at our place we had a, a campfire like this mm -hmm. too, and you know, we, we invited friends over, you know, mm -hmm. and we had a cookout and people talk, you know, about certain things, you know, mm -hmm. and we enjoyed it, you know, we really, really enjoyed it. And this, it, it brings like, you know, family, friends together. You know. That's great. Is your family? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the Eagle Creek Singers. The good singers and most of the songs that that uh, that they do, mm -hmm. um, he he's a person that writes all the songs. You? Yeah, ah. he does. So mostly like you know, a meditation, thinking about you know just being by yourself is when these songs come about. So mm -hmm. the chants, you know, the words that are in the songs, you know, mm -hmm. they come about and they're beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah, Can we get to hear a little bit. A lot of what's happening here are are. Um, are things that I, as best as I can, try to recreate in my home. Drum circles, sweat lodges, nature, silence, meditation. There's a lot of, a lot of what they do and how they live that I very much respect and, and relate to in some cases, and particularly the drum circle uh, tonight. Um, I have drum circles all the time at my house. We try to recreate it in my living room. And we come damn close, but this is the real thing.
I actually asked the, the one of the men that wrote the songs that they played how he wrote them, and he says that he never writes anything down. He just sings it, and if he memorizes it, um, great. It's, in, it's etched in his head, and if he forgot it, um, only recently did he realize that it would be a really good idea to tape some of it so he didn't forget it, which is exactly the way that I write. It organically became time for us to sing a song for them, and we had an extra band member, which was the Thunder, which, which um, very loudly kind of started the song for us. Kindly, thank you.
basically the last few days have been way more than I even had anticipated. And usually I have no expectations before I go on a trip. But anticipation I did have, and this has surpassed anything that I had envisioned, basically. Getting to know the people within this culture, getting to know their views on life and their, their takes on their past and their future and their belief that our unbridled and unrestricted humanness would be able to um, come up with a form of unchaotic living, basically. And this trip has been very inspiring and very humbling. And the Navajo people have been so gracious and welcoming to us in a way that is not at all taken for granted. And I'm very grateful to them and just much respect and much inspiration and much love to them. Unbelievable. An old man turned 98. He won the lottery and died the next day. It's a black fly in your Chardonnay. It's a death row pardon. Two minutes too late. And isn't it ironic? Don't you? Visit our official website at musicinhighplaces.msn.com.